On a clear day, the view from Staten Island is unrivaled. But the island's very position is its vulnerability. It's here that the death toll from Superstorm Sandy was highest. The surge was so strong that floodwaters ripped homes from their foundations. Help was slow to arrive, say locals. There's still so much work left to do. This used to be my house. In Midland Beach, Ayman Yusuf barely survived the storm with his family. My mom starts going in the water, so I had to swim in the water and pull an extension cord and wrap my mom and lift her up. I don't know how to swim, and either neither my mom or my nephew. And we opened the door and we asked my neighbor, can we come to you? They said yes. Eamon's dog, Samson, miraculously escaped, but everything else was gone. Eamon's been in a hotel for most of the past year. He put up tents where his house once stood, starting a charity to help other victims as he waits for the money and permits to rebuild. The way it looks, it's going to take years to rebuild. We shouldn't be suffering like this after one year. We should not. Around the corner, Kenneth Ebel is living in a tiny one-room cottage. I have electricity here. I have no running water here, but we, I bring it in from the front house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no heat. Kenneth is depending on aid from local groups to finish rebuilding his old home. But he's happy just to be back in his own property. Even though it looks kind of rough in the back there, uh, I, I kind of love it. <laughs> it's like being back home in a way, you know. In nearby Oakwood Beach, where three drowned during the storm, the toll taken by Sandy has led to major changes. This entire neighborhood will be demolished, returned to nature, since it's likely to flood again. The federal government will buy the houses at their pre-storm value. An estate agent who owned property here came up with the plan. This is really a win-win. There are taxpayers saying, why are these people getting bought out? And they shouldn't get bought out. They know they live right near the ocean. No one ever suspected this would ever happen. Um, and um, and so, so from the government's perspe perspective, they are going to save money. Uh, and then for the inland portion of Staten Island, it's going to act as a barrier. So it's great for them, and it's great for the people who were victims of the storm. New York City is so vulnerable to storms because much of it is at sea level. So now officials are shoring up their coastal defences. One of the things they're doing is bringing in rocks like this. The idea is that they'll break up the impact of the waves if there's another storm and protect the coastline from erosion. On other beaches, they're building big sand berms. Parks Commissioner Veronica White says these are just some of the solutions New York's working on because no one wants to back away from the coastline. Retrenchment is really not an option. We are, this is an island. Manhattan is an island. <laughs> Brooklyn and Queens are on an island. So we can't cede our islands because we are a city of islands and we are going to be protecting our shoreline and protecting our homes beyond and ensuring that we create a resilient city for the future. Sea levels are predicted to rise if our climate continues to change. New York's not taking any chances. Laura Trevelyan, BBC News, Staten Island.